I'm going to talk about the generation of uh, monoclonal antibodies to food and mouse disease virus serotype A and uh, the antibodies application in a competitive ELISA for the detection of uh, specific uh, antibodies. So I'm going to give a little bit uh, introduction for because uh, I'm thinking some of you may not familiar with uh, food and mouse disease. Food and mouse disease remains one of the world's most widespread, episodic, and highly contagious disease. FMD can cause major economic losses even in previously FMD-free countries. Over 100 countries around the world are not considered FMD-free. FMD is endemic in many areas of Asia, Africa, and South America. In 2007, there is one outbreak in UK. FMD virus is recognized as seven serotypes. There are serotype O, A, C, H1, SAT1, SAT2, and SAT3. So serotype O and A are the most widespread around the world. FMD is caused by a single-stranded RNA virus belong to the family of uh, Picona virus. There are 10 reasons to explain why FMD is difficult to control and eradicate. The first one is uh, rapid virus replication, and uh, also the virus has a higher, high mutation, mutation rate, also high levels of uh, viral excretion. The, for infection, only need a very small doses of virus. And also there are multiple forms of transmission, include uh, contact uh, or aerosols. There is a wide geographical distribution, and also the, the virus can infect a broad range of uh, animals, such as uh, cattle, buffaloes, pigs, sheep, goats, and about uh, 70 wildlife species. The virus only uh, also has the ability to establish uh, carrier status. So after infection, the virus can stay inside of the animal body and uh, any time can cause uh, outbreaks. There is uh, antigenic diversity leading to poor cross immunity among serotypes. So for animals even vaccinated with one serotype, the animals still have chance to infect with other serotypes of uh, FMD. So the last is a relatively short duration of immunity. Even after vaccination, the immunity can last only like uh, six months. So for clinically, we use uh, antibody detection for FMD. The FMD virus specific antibody identification is very useful, can be used as an indicator of FMDV infection, and also for the screening of animals for the, for the presence of antibodies for any export or import animals. Also, the antibody detection can be used for testing vaccine potency and also monitoring the effectiveness of vaccinations. Last, uh, can be used for epidemiological studies of disease in animal populations. So most uh, widely used for antibody detection is a virus neutralization test, however, the VNT has uh, several drawbacks. Because the uh, VNT is uh, costly and uh, labor intensive, the procedure requires live virus, so limits the tests uh, have to be performed in biosafety level three lab. So for you may not familiar with um, biosafety lab, uh, level three, we work in the level three, so every day we have to change totally like uh, change the clothes, and when we come out and end of the day, we have to take shower every day and uh, change back to your own clothes. So everything go inside level three have to be autoclaved when they come out. 
And also the VNT requires uh, two to three days to send results. However, ELISAS is very sensitive, specific, and uh, rapid within a couple of the hours, like uh, three to four hours, uh, we can obtain the results. And also it's easy to perform, to scale up. Especially for competitive ELISA, is suitable for detection of antibodies from different species. So for one test, it, we can use the same test without changing any reagents to test all the serum from different animals. Either keto or pig, it doesn't matter as long as um, it's competitive ELISA. So our objective of the study is to generate and characterize FMD sure type A specific monoclonal antibodies. In the meantime, use those monoclonal antibodies to develop a competitive ELISA for serologic detection of FMD sure type antibodies and also to validate this C ELISA. Uh, actually, for competitive ELISA, we can use uh, polyclonal antibodies, but uh, polyclonal antibodies um, always uh, show the high bound ground and uh, cross reactivity. So we decided to use uh, monoclonal antibodies. Uh, there are use of monoclonal antibodies that can lower cross reactivity and easy in standardization, and also there are less bench to bench variations. We still use uh, conventional technique for monoclonal antibody production. So use uh, immunized spleen cells fused with myeloma cells uh, produce uh, hybridomas. So from three fusions, uh, totally we produce uh, 12 uh, monoclonal uh, hybridomas. And uh, by determining the isotyping, all those uh, IgG isotypes. And the binding epitopes for those 12 uh, monoclonal antibodies, only one monoclonal antibody reacted with a linear epitope, and all other monoclonal antibodies reacted with a conformational epitope. Because our goal is to develop a competitive ELISA, so we screened those 12 uh, monoclonal antibodies to see if they can compete with a polyclonal zero collected from infected animal. So from the screening, we see two monoclonal antibodies that have uh, demonstrated the ability to compete with uh, polyclonal zero collected from infected animals. So we further investigated these two monoclonal antibodies and determined if they can be used uh, for competitive ELISA. For TIS, uh, the idea antibody have to recognize all of the, uh, it means that the binding epitope have to be conserved because for FMD virus, as I mentioned earlier, they, are, they have a very high mutation rate. So it is uh, really important to find the monoclonal antibodies uh, combined uh, all of the isolates. So in our lab, we have a total 46 isolates collected. So we examined if these two monoclonal antibodies can <coughs> react with all of those isolates. So the monoclonal antibody number five will demonstrate uh, reactivity to all of the 46 isolates. It indicate these uh, antibodies binding sites is uh, pretty concerned. And the other monoclonal antibody number seven failed to react it with the five of the isolates. But uh, compared to others, it's uh, still pretty good. It's a uh, pretty high conserved the binding epitopes. And uh, this is a FMD virus uh, 3D structure. The FMD contains uh, four structural proteins, uh, virus uh, protein VP1, VP2, and VP3, VP4. VP1, 2, 3, they're exposed on the surface and the VP4 are internalized. So in mature viral particles, 60 copies of those structural protein associate to form a capsid and uh, surround and protect the genome. Previously, there are four antigenic sites for FMD virus that have been identified. There are five antigenic sites, uh, site one to five. 
So at the Titanic site one, two, and the number four located on the VP1 structural protein and the site three by antigenic sites located on VP2 and the VP3 and the site 5 located on VP3 here. So next uh, we like to determine where the antibody binding sites are located on this um, two monoclonal antibodies. Uh, if the antibody binding sites are linear, we can we can identify the binding sites by by peptide uh, ELISA. However, our two monoclonal antibodies the binding epitope, they're all conformational. So we use uh, antibody resistant mutant selection. Uh, so the principle for the antibody resistant mutant selection is we use a large amount of the antibody. So under the high pressure of the antibody, the virus will mutant try to escape, escape the antibody bindings, and then the antigenic, the antibody binding sites will be totally delete by analyze the sequence for the mutants and also compare to the parental virus. What we did is um, combine monoclonal antibodies, so purified monoclonal antibodies with a virus and incubate 30 minutes. And uh, after incubation, we inoculate this mixture with uh, cells. So this cells is uh, this cells is uh, kind of a pig, pig kidney cells, and they are sensitive to FMD virus. And uh, after incubation, we can see until we see the hundred percent CPE, and this procedure will repeat uh, six times. Uh, make sure the antibody binding sites are complete uh, deleted, and uh, after this uh, six uh, passages, will determine the sequence for the mutant virus and also for the parent virus. Compare the sequence, we'll know which site, uh, which animal amino acids are deleted. So this site will be the antigenic, uh, the antibody binding sites. This is the uh, ELISA results uh, to test uh, six passages uh, for the mutants. Here are the parental virus and the passage one to six. That's uh, This is for monoclonal antibody number five. Uh, we detect those virus use uh, polyclonal antibody. As we can see, there is uh, no significant difference for parental virus and up to passage six. Because for polyclonal antibodies, there are so many binding epitopes. So one epitope deleted, mm -hmm. there is a uh, it will not show any significant changes for polyclonal antibody. However, for our monoclonal antibodies, uh, as we can see for parental virus, uh, the binding is, the reactivity is very high and at each passage, the reactivity is significantly reduced. At passage six, uh, the binding is uh, almost uh, disappeared. It indicates uh, these binding sites are completely deleted. And uh, by analyzing uh, sequencing, we identified uh, both monoclonal antibodies uh, reacted um, to quite similar antigenic sites, and it's located on both VP2 and VP3, so equivalent to the previously identified antigenic uh, three. So next, uh, we use this uh, two monoclonal antibodies and the BEI inactivated virus as an antigen developed uh, competitive ELISA to determine the cutoff value, we need to test uh, the normal serum from all different animal species. So we tested, use this developer uh, test uh, to test it um, around 1,000 uh, negative serum. This is a uh, result. Uh, here are the percentage of the inhibition, and also here are the frequency distribution. As we can see, it shows a normal distribution and the mean percentage inhibition for those normal serum is about uh, 0% and uh, by plus 
the three standard deviation, we determined uh, the cutoff value is about uh, 50%. So based on the 50% cutoff values, we calculated the diagnostic uh, specificity is for those uh, tested serum is about 99%. So these are the ELISA results. We tested the serum collected from exper experimental inoculated animals to use FMD serial type A viruses. And uh, here are the percentage of inhibition, and here are the days post inoculation with the virus from day zero to about uh, day seven. As we can see, the animals uh, shows a negative uh, antibody response uh, from day zero to about day four. And by this uh, newly developed AC ELISA, 100% animals attend the zero positive zero conversion at about uh, five dpi. And uh, the positive uh, immuno response uh, lasted uh, until the end of the experiment. Also, we compared uh, our results uh, for this newly developed uh, C ELISA with uh, another competitive ELISA, but this ELISA is also developed in our lab. Uh, the difference is uh, this uh, C ELISA is detect antibody against uh, non-structural proteins. And uh, the disadvantage for this one is uh, this ELISA cannot tell the serotypes because uh, non-structural protein, they are not a serotype specific. So even we know the antibody are positive, we don't know which serotypes. And also this one cannot be used uh, for monitor the vaccination, uh, vaccination efficiency, potency. But uh, this test uh, is uh, well validated, so we need to compare with uh, this uh, 3BC ELISA. As we can see from day one to, uh, to four DPI, all the samples uh, again are negative and uh, start from, oh, this one it shows uh, positive zero conversion showed uh, late compared to the newly developed uh, zero type AC ELISA, 80% uh, positive zero conversion occurred and uh, seven DPI. Oh, this is uh, just a similar result, uh, but just uh, animal inoculated with different uh, isolates. Uh, as we can see, the results are quite similar with the uh, previous one. Again, those are the sheep uh, experimental inoculated with another isolates because of FMD zero type A, they're all within zero types. There are so many different uh, isolates. We need to make sure our test uh, can detect the antibody from different uh, isolates inoculated uh, animals. Uh, again, these are the days uh, post inoculation, but uh, this experiment only lasts a very short time. And also the percentage of the inhibition, as we can see, uh, from, yeah, so this is the, before inoculation we collected the sample as a negative control up to four DPI, there are all the samples are negative, but uh, from about uh, day five, uh, some serum turned the zero positive and at day seven, all of the animals uh, turned this positive zero conversion. Uh, again, for the 3B C ELISA, on day seven, only about 38% uh, of the animals uh, showed the zero positive, but uh, at uh, 10 DPC, it shows 100% zero conversion. So it's uh, quite late compared to the newly developed zero type A C ELISA, and also for VNT, it's um, also, the zero conversion showed uh, slower compared to the newly developed uh, AC ELISA. This is uh, another experiment. Again, those uh, sheep uh, <coughs> first uh, vaccinated and then challenged with another FMD 
virus serotype A, and uh, three tests were compared with uh, our newly developed AC ELISA, VNT, and the 3BC ELISA. So this uh, shows a kind of summary by eight DPC, 50% uh, tended zero positive by AC ELISA, but uh, only 17% uh, for VNT and the 3BC ELISA by 10 DPC, 9 DPC, 100% animals uh, show this positive uh, antibody response, but only 33% for both VNT and the 3BC ELISA. And also, we need to determine if our newly developed C ELISA is uh, serotype specific. So we use, uh, thanks. We use uh, animals inoculated with uh, FMD serotype O. Uh, as we can see, again, the, the serum was collected at the different experimental days, and here are the percentage of inhibition. And as we can see, for serotype O inoculated animals, all the serum are positive. So their percentage inhibition O under 50%. But uh, this is uh, another for all serotype C ELISA, and it shows a positive antibody response. So this indicates our newly developed uh, competitive ELISA is uh, serotype specific. So now is a uh, summary. The panel of uh, monoclonal antibodies specific to FMD serotype A were generated and the binding epitopes of two monoclonal antibodies in this, um, used in this C ELISA were well characterized and their binding epitopes are highly conserved. One of the monoclonal, yeah, I mentioned this already, and uh, a competitive C ELISA was developed using the two monoclonal antibodies and the BEI inactivated FMD serotype A as an antigen. This uh, newly developed C ELISA showed a comparable performance uh, to the VNT and the 3BC ELISA, but more sensitive than other two tests. The C ELISA is simple, rapid for detection of the FMDA specific uh, antibody. So those are the people in the group uh, working for the project and also the animal care staff to do the mouse inoculation, trail bleeding, and uh, obtain the spin from the mice. And uh, also Jackie from Australia Animal Health uh, Laboratory provided the serum from their sheep vaccine experiments. So thank you for your attention. I mentioned already competitive ELISA because uh, first I need to say that FMD there inf uh, can infect so many different species of animals, right? So like I mentioned, uh, pig, cattle, and sheep. But uh, if we use indirect ELISA, we need a second antibody to be specific, right? So we need a conjugated second a second antibody against a pig, against a sheep. So for the each, each species, we need to have each single test. And also for wildlife, we don't have uh, antibody, some of them, because I mentioned 70, yeah. So yeah, we need all second antibody against all those uh, different species. So it's impossible. By using competitive ELISA, we don't need. We only need the monoclonal antibodies and the second antibody is anti-mouse conjugate. So it's a very simple. One ELISA will detect antibody for all the animals, especially when we do surveillance. So yeah, we get a lot of samples for all different animals. Can you break it if you separate the amount of antibodies? Sorry? Yeah, percentage inhibition rate, right. Uh, right. Uh, the concentration, the amount of uh, antibodies 
Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, we don't know the antibody amount, uh, but uh, basically we know based on the percentage of inhibition, we know because for each test, uh, we have a strong positive, weak positive. So we know the range. Usually the strong positive will give us uh, 80, 90 percent inhibition. So if we saw those uh, kind of inhibition, we know the antibodies uh, level is higher compared to the 60 percent of inhibition for weak positive. We still can use the polyclonal because of our, I showed for our serotype O uh, C, that's why we use the polyclonal, but the polyclonal, the problem is uh, always a high bound ground. The, the false percentage is quite high, and also there, between serotypes, we always see lots of cross reactivity, so we still don't know which serotype the animal are infected with. And was the sequencing of the binding site, was that also to establish serotypes? Uh, uh, or, I, or so what was the purpose of, of, of mapping out exactly the binding site? Oh, so for just uh, for us, uh, have a clear mind. Oh, okay, good. good. Actually, we don't need to, but uh, yeah. As long as it shows the competition. Oh, no, it's better. I, I just didn't yeah. see that it was absolutely required. But yes, of course, yeah, it's I very know. nice. It's right. very good to have. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you.